Jekyll Heard, Bidwell Woodhouse, K3 Marker. When Rose Wilson was editor publisher of the Sarasota Times, we were still a part of Manatee County. And being a progressive Sarasota person, she was all for the split, which occurred in 1921. And when Sarasota broke away from Manatee County, she rechristened her paper, the Sarasota County Times. In 1902, the citizens of Sarasota heard that the Seaboard Airline Railway Station was coming, and they wanted to incorporate as a town. And so they took a vote, and they incorporated as a town in 1902. The railway came in 1903, and they chose as the town motto, May Sarasota Prosper. Well, a member of the Florida Mortgage and Investment Company surveying crew was a gentleman named Lewis Colson, and he ultimately lived in Sarasota, and he became a reverend and a voice for the black community. And uh, in fact, he and his wife were the only African Americans buried in Rosemary Cemetery, which was the town cemetery at the time. In 1910, Bertha Palmer from Chicago came down. She had seen an ad in a newspaper that A.B. Edwards and J.H. Lord had put in. And uh, as I understand it, it was very cold February, which is not hard to believe in Chicago. And she wanted to come down with her entourage for a look-see. So they had a private railway car, and they came to Sarasota, and A.B. Edwards took them around, and she was very impressed with Sarasota. And she said that uh, Sarasota Bay was as beautiful as the Bay of Naples, and it generated a lot of national interest. Because Bertha Palmer was a woman of the world. She was very wealthy. She was the queen of Chicago society. She had homes in Paris, Great Britain, a mansion in Chicago. So what she said, people picked up on and it generated a lot of enthusiasm in Chicago. And she set up what I would call the Chicago connection to Sarasota. And a lot of wealthy Chicagoans followed her and really helped to build Sarasota up. In May of 1910, Owen Burns arrives. He had been living at, in Chicago at the time and probably heard about Sarasota through the chatter from uh, Mrs. Palmer. And when he arrived, he immediately fell in love with the area. And he saw the potential for growth and development. And so he bought out the holdings of the Florida Mortgage and Investment Company from John Hamilton Gillespie. And for $35,000, he ended up owning what would be 75% of today's city limits. And he immediately set up the task of developing and he set up several companies to do business, a real estate company, he set up a bank, he set up a, a, a road building company, um, and he played a significant impact on Sarasota at the time, probably the most significant impact. In 1911, uh, John and Charles Ringling were convinced to come to Sarasota by a gentleman named Ralph Caples. Uh, Ralph Caples was a big civic leader throughout Sarasota's early history. And uh, Caples, ring, the Ringlings weren't looking to come to develop. They were looking to come for a place of rest and relaxation from the grinds of the circus. And initially, they went to Tarpon Springs. And they weren't welcomed so much at Tarpon Springs because they were considered circus people. And they were kind of looked down upon. Well, Ralph Cables convinced them to come to Sarasota, and they brought property on uh, Shell Beach, and that's where ultimately they would uh, build their mansions. And ultimately, they would do business with Owen Burns, particularly John Ringling would be an associate of Owen Burns, and they would do much development in the 1920s. Harry Heigl lived in Venice first with his uh, father, and he came to Sarasota and saw Sarasota's potential. And he and a gentleman named Captain Roberts and another gentleman named Arbogast platted the north end of Sarasota Key to become Siesta. And he built a hotel there called the Heigelhurst. And he was elected a city councilman and mayor of Sarasota. 
and he was everywhere to be seen with, he was a real Sarasota booster. At the time, people who were trying to generate a lot of enthusiasm in the area were called boosters, and he was known as Sarasota's indefatigable booster. About 1915, there was a, the first brick, all brick hotel was built in Sarasota, and it was called the Tonnelier Building. And it was built by a gentleman, or two brothers from St. Petersburg. And I think about 1915, this fireproof building burned to the ground. And a lot of that area, it was located on Lower Main Street, a lot of that area went up in smoke. Sarasota used to draw what they would call colonies of people. And one of the colonies came from Lima, Ohio, and they were the Hover Brothers. And the Hover Brothers purchased the dock from Harry Heigel. Heigel had first offered it to the town of Sarasota, and they didn't buy it. So the Hover Brothers bought it, and they put what they called the Hover Arcade on it. And the Hover Arcade was a beautiful, blonde, brick, neoclassical building. And uh, for many years, it was Sarasota's city hall. And it was right on Sarasota Bay. And there was an archway that led onto the pier. So you could just go straight down Main Street, cross over Gulfstream Avenue, and go straight onto the pier through the arch. One of the Hover brothers was a doctor. And one of the things I read about him was he said he would never present a bill to a patient if it would unjustly cause them some kind of financial harm. Probably the first doctor to come to Sarasota was a, a, a gentleman called Dr. Wallace. And he came with the Scott colony. And I read that one of the colonists said that he didn't stay in Sarasota because he thought the climate was so healthful that he wouldn't be able to do enough business. So he moved, I believe, to Kentucky. And then the, the most notable doctors about that time period, uh, Whitaker was a doctor, William Whitaker's son. He moved to Bradenton. So the really popular doctors in Sarasota at the time it was a Dr. Wilson, uh, a Dr. Joe Halton, and a Dr. Jack Halton, who was his brother. And Jack Halton built the Halton Sanitarium, which was on Gulfstream Avenue. And when Bertha Palmer came to town with her entourage, the DeSoto Hotel was in such sad state that they converted the sanitarium into a hotel for Bertha Palmer. And that's also the place that uh, Owen Burns stayed when he came to town. And when Burns bought out the holdings of the Florida Mortgage Investment Company, he turned the Halton Sanitarium into his home. The Halton home, the home of Dr. Joseph Halton and his wife, is still on Coconut and Fruitville Road. And it's been transformed into a lawyer's office. And it's an absolutely beautiful home. And I think it shows the wisdom of preserving the past for today's Sarasota.